This is Damien Ferry, Senior Editor of The Unshackled, and I am here to welcome you to the 2021 Unshackler Awards. This is the sixth time that we are doing these awards, so, um, and we've got many years to come, I'm sure, as well. Now, um, we've had a crazy year, of course. Um, how these awards came about is that we were sick and tired of woke people uh, becoming Australian of the Year, so we decided to create our own awards. Now, how it works is I've got 10 uh, awards that I'm going to be addressing, and I will run down from the 10th and to the 10th highest to the first highest um, on the on the structure of percentage wise on who you voted for, and then we'll get to see who the winners are of these awards. Um, it ran for a, a good month or so prior, and Australia Day is when we announce them, of course. So let's go and do this. The 2021 Fake News of the Year Award is the first one. In previous times, in the winners we've had is uh, CNN, ABC, three years running, and the project was last year, and we'll see how they fare tonight. So in, we've got the Daily Mail, the New Daily, Crikey, News.com.au, Nine Fairfax, Seven News, The Guardian. In third place, with 15% of the vote, CNN. Well done to CNN, they're the 2016 winners and always uh, high up in the stakes, of course. On second place, and this was last year's winner, with 24% of the vote, The Project. Of course, a massive brainwashing woke um, indoctrination uh, show on Channel 10, of course, and um, one that definitely deserves that place. And with first place, of course, none other than the ABC on 43%. Of course, the ABC are very known um, to push biases. You've got Q&A, of course. I mean, all of their shows are basically leaning left, very progressive, and um, they definitely deserve this one for Fake News of the Year Award because they are generally projecting a certain viewpoint, and any view that I like, they shut down, and definitely deserving of this award. Now with the next one. We've got the 2021 International Media Personality of the Year Award. Past winners we've had Milo in 2016 and 17, Paul Joseph Watson in 2018, and Tucker Carlson the last two years in 2019 and 20. So we've got Luke Rudowski, we've got Alex Belfield, Katie Hopkins, Tim Poole, Candace Owens, Stu Peters, my favourite trooper, came in at fifth. Paul Joseph Watson in fourth. In third place, with 12% of the vote, Alan Jones. And of course, Alan Jones uh, used to be at Sky News and um, went independent and has his own news, uh, um, state, uh, well, news um, platform, you can say, his own website. And uh, someone that was really outspoken about all the mandates and everything like that, and a little bit too much for Sky News, apparently. So he's gone separate ways and now... He has his own show, so well done to him. In second place, with 14% of the vote, we have Alex Jones. And Alex Jones, of course, another trooper in the US, has been around for decades. He knew about all these things before everyone else did. So um, someone that definitely is on the ball and um, lets loose. He doesn't care what anybody thinks and he, he just won't stand for the current rubbish that we have to go through. So he's well-deserving on second place, and of course on first place, with a whopping 41% of the vote, Tucker Carlson once again. So this is the third time in a row he's won this award. Tucker Carlson has his own news show on Fox News, and um, has massive amount of ratings. He's definitely right up there, and he's always been someone that uh, has been a, a voice for freedom, a voice uh, for choice on the mandates issues, against the ridiculous lockdowns, mandates, and someone that we can um, trust to get a different opinion in the news media. So he's just a great person to come at number first, in first place. And um, now we will move on to the next award. So on the next award we've got is the 2021 Degenerate of the Year. Previous winners, Vanya. Liz Kazan, we've got Tom Ballard in 2018, Jessica Yaniv in 2019, and Hunter Biden last year in 2020. And we'll see how they fare. So we've had candidates this year, like John Weaver, Zhang Jaoli, 
Matt Hancock, Michael Johnson, Prince Andrew, Andrew Cuomo, Ghislaine Maxwell. In third place, with 17% of the vote, we've got Bill Gates. And someone that definitely is deserving of this award, Bill Gates seems to be wanting to be in control of the world, it seems, with everything that he's pushing, buying up all the farms, you know, selling all these, and funding all these poisons. He's just a, an absolute tyrant and someone deserving of that third place of Degenerate of the Year. In second place, and he was the winner last year, Hunter Biden, 21%. Another one that seems to get through the cracks. He's the son of the president, of course, so he can get away with anything. A real degenerate and someone that um, should be punished and should be in jail for a lot of the things that he's been doing. So, um, well deserving, but on first place, of course, none other, with 40% of the vote, Anthony Fauci. I mean, this guy here... He doesn't care. He wants to sell vaccines. I mean, he will go to miles and miles to make money, to, to get behind and, and boost you to the, to the end, to, to you basically drop. I mean, this guy here pushing boosters, third, fourth doses, he's an absolute tyrant and someone that is against freedom of choice. He um, seems to be someone that, um, of course, the governments listen to, even though he really has had a, a troubling past and has a lot of bad sort of history. Um, yet again, of course, he's in control and someone that we need to really be wary of. I mean, they had to even design a movie for him, make him look like a hero. I mean, that's how bad he is. I mean, just to sort of push a, a kind of a victimhood status on, on Anthony Fauci, make, make it look like everyone was picking on him. So, um, well deserving of that award of Degenerate of the Year. Uh, next award, 2021 Culture Warrior of the Year Award. And um, we've had candidates uh, in the past win, like Sam Hyde in 2017, Daisy Cousins 2018, 2019, Jacinta Price, and Mark Latham last year in 2020. So let's see how they fare. In this year's um, Culture Warrior of the Year, we've had Tanya Davies, Bernie Finn, Stephen Chabura, Augusta Zimmerman, Alexandra Marshall, Joel Jamal, Evelyn Ray, and in third place, ACL's Martin Isles, with 15% of the vote. He's a great uh, hero, great guy for, uh, um, that definitely uh, protects Christianity. He's someone that fights um, when, I mean, obviously we've seen Christianity getting, trying to get destroyed in the media, and he's um, definitely someone that um, stands up for our faith and uh, ensures that we can um, continue our faith and, and that it, when it, especially when it comes to the schooling system I mean it's just disgusting what's going on with the Marxism and the, and the nonsense that's going on there and he's really against that and he's been a, a, a real strong voice uh, in campaigning against those things and a, a good pro-life candidate too uh, in second place Drew Pavolu so 25% of the vote Drew got and that's a great showing and of course, in first place, Mark Latham with 29% once again. So that's the second time in a row that he's won that. Mark Latham being a One Nation candidate, New South Wales leader of the party. He's definitely um, done a lot of good in his time. He's outspoken when it comes to mandates. He's um, riling up against uh, all of the craziness when it comes to um, all of the curfews that we had in Sydney. Uh, he was right against that. Um, when it comes to mandating vaccines, of course, he's been great against uh, the nonsense in our schooling systems and the Marxism pushing in our universities. Uh, someone that's a real leader and someone that we definitely need to get behind. In 2021 uh, Trigger Feminist of the Year Award, now past winners we've had were Hillary Clinton back in 2016, Sarah Hansen Young two years in a row there, Greta Thunberg in 2019 and Clem Ford in 2020. So we'll see how they fare on this year's award. And we've had candidates like Louise Milligan, Yvette Darth, Vanessa Van Badham, Megan Markle, Sarah Hansen Young, Clementine Ford in fifth, Greta Thunberg in fourth. Now in third place, none other than Jacinta Ardern, with 13% of the vote, New Zealand leader of course, and um, someone that's definitely a real feminist. She definitely wears her pants in that family. Um, having her boyfriend carry a handbag everywhere she goes. So um, someone well deserving of that spot and someone that's obviously disarmed the New Zealand public, done a lot of damage to that country, 
plunged them in debt, pushing the vaccine agenda, an absolute tyrant, so someone well deserving of that. In second place with 20% of the vote, Lisa Wilkinson. Of course, Lisa Wilkinson being the head host on the project, someone that can't stop at anything than to push her left-wing views, and, um, well, what can you say? I mean, definitely deserving of that position there. Um, a real feminist indeed. And, of course, none other, 31% of the vote in first place, Lydia Thorpe. Now, Lydia hates Australia Day more than anything in the world. She's uh, likes to push her um, Aboriginal nationalistic views, despite only being probably 1% Aboriginal. Seems pretty white, like me, like anyone else. And yet, um, very virtue signalling on that front. Wants to tear down everything, burn it to the ground, like she said in the past. She even um, came out and said that um, another senator, a Liberal senator, um, shouldn't have spread her legs. Um, she made that comment in relation to her child because her child um, uh, is disabled. So um, basically a low blow there, a real feral um, and someone that we really need to get rid of out of Parliament. So um, let's do our best this time around whenever she's up for election next. In 2021, Cis White Male of the Year Award. Now in the past we've had Corey Bernardi, Tommy Robertson, Tony Abbott, Craig Kelly last year. Although Craig's in a different award this year, so we'll see how those candidates or any others fare. We've had Andrew Lamming, Matt Canavan, Malcolm Roberts, Alex Antich, Gerard Rennick, Andrew Bogut. In fourth place, Novak Djokovic. I actually thought that he might have gone um, edged a little bit further, and he was a real standout this year with the mandates, of course, with the Australian Open. In third place, 13% George Christensen, a great senator, um, a great House of Representative uh, member for uh, Dawson, of course, not a senator there, and um, one that's unfortunately retiring, which is a bit of a shame. Um, although if he wasn't retiring, he probably would have gotten kicked out too, um, coming in an election because um, of his views against mandates and lockdowns and the nonsense. So, someone that's done a great job, and I'm sure will continue to do um, a good job in whatever field he takes. In second place, Barclay McGain with 13% of the vote again. And with a whopping 39% of the vote in first place, the winner of the Cis White Male of the Year, Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle actually came second last year. And he had um, good success in courts, of course, with um, the charge of um, shooting those um, three people down at the event there, which was self-defence. Um, someone that's been um, a real standout. He's actually spoken on Fox News and different channels and um, just aired his story because he was really attacked in the media for some time. And um, basically someone that's a strong advocate for gun rights, of course, and for freedom of speech. So well done to him for becoming um, the first, um, uh, the person that's come first in Cis White Male of the Year 2021. Uh, the next award we have here, and we're getting closer, closer to the end here, we've got 2021 International Cuck of the Year. Now, previous winners, we've had Justin Trudeau, which won three times in a row, 16, 17, and 18. We've had Richard Di Natale on 2019 and Prince Harry last year in 2020. So we'll see how we go with those candidates in this run. So we've had Matt Keane, Barnaby Joyce, a real turncoat, that one. Uh, Kevin Rudd, Emmanuel Macron, Andy Medic, Malcolm Turnbull, Boris Johnson in fourth, another turncoat there. And in third place, Anthony Albanese with 15%. I mean, what a failed leader he is. And someone that, I mean, as bad as Scott Morrison is going, is probably never going to win the election um, because he's going to be worse, and a lot of people know that. I mean, you have a Labour guy running things in, in federally. You can just see what the tyrants have done in the state governments in Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia. I'm pretty sure you, you were going to get even worse under Anthony Albanese. Um, and there's plenty of other things. Change the date, nonsense. I mean, just, you know, transgenderism. I mean, just imagine the things that he can be capable of if he ever gets in power. In second place, Justin Trudeau with 23%. And someone that's always got in high results here. I mean, a real cuck, of course. I mean, you, you just... <laughs> a real standout. I mean, uh, Canada, he's absolutely destroyed Canada. Again, with this agenda and also the the left wokeism agendas that he's pushed forward to over the years. 26% uh, though, and second time running, first place goes to Prince Harry. I mean, this guy here, you know that he's bitch slapped around. He's definitely not wearing the pants in that family. Why did he do it? Who knows? I mean, all of us are thinking he's mad. We just really don't have any idea why 
why he made that choice in, in, in getting Meghan Markle of all people that he could have gotten. So anyway, he has to live with the consequences and uh, he ends up being the cuck of the year for the second time running. Next award is the 2021 International Unshackler of the Year Award. In previous winners, we've had Donald Trump in 2016, 17, 19 and 20. I mean, he's won every year except for 18, which was Fraser Reining that won that year. So that just shows um, how high he normally gets in this uh, award. Let's see what the candidates achieve this time. We've had Greg, Ag Greg Abbott, Clive Palmer, Jair Bolsonaro, Matteo Salvini, Viktor Orban, Vladimir Putin, Rand Paul, in third place, Pauline Hanson with 15%, and Pauline's done a great job when it comes to the vaccine mandates, and also, um, I mean, she was one of the first ones, I mean, 25 years ago or so, when she first came on the scene to really push a, a different vision uh, from the main two parties, um, a more nationalist approach, and she's someone that um, has been creating those funny cartoons that I'm sure a lot of you have been watching, so, yeah, definitely someone to get behind. Uh, One Nation leader, uh, Paulina Hansen, and she's came third. person that's come second is Donald Trump on 17%. Like I said, he's won the award many times, but he hasn't been able to win it this time. Um, past leader of the United States, and I'm sure we'll be seeing much more of him soon. First place, 42%, Ron DeSantis. And, I mean, you have to say that he is the best governor that... I think I've ever seen, or one of the best, and he has been a hero. I mean, Florida is absolutely free, free of the madness, free of the mandates, the vaccine passports. He has done a great job, and a lot of people are moving there. I mean, they're getting tens of thousands of people fleeing to Florida because they know that he, they're safe under him. I mean, their business can stay open, and they don't have to um, go through this tyrannical, uh, dystopian uh, world that a lot of the other states are pushing, including what we're going through in Australia. So um, Ron DeSantis definitely is deserving of that award. And it's great to see him having won that. Hopefully a pro and the next president of the United States. We'll see how we go and if he uh, puts his hand up. Uh, the next award and one of the um, most popular awards is the 2021 Australian Unshackler of the Year Award. Uh, Eve Black uh, won it last year and we'll see um, who was uh, put in this year for, for the award. We've had uh, candidates like Rafael Fernandez, Fanos Panayidis, Harrison McLean, the Aussie Cossack, Pete Evans, Monica Smith, Max Egan, in third place with 9%, Craig Kelly. And Craig Kelly's one of the outstanding voices of Parliament. I mean, what he's been able to do with the United Australia Party He's really put them in a, an election-winning uh, chance. I mean, he can definitely achieve so much in the federal election coming up. He's been an outstanding voice. He's definitely tried to um, get rid of these mandates. Unfortunately, the two major parties voted against the bill when it comes to discrimination against the unvaccinated. He always puts up medical evidence. He's had lots of discussions with medical um, experts, doctors and scientists and so forth. A uh, real candidate and someone that you can tell isn't a career politician. I mean, this guy is a standout and we need to support this guy. He's great. Um, the second um, person to come in with 13%, Rukshan Fernando, a great candidate, Rukshan. And um, with his uh, Facebook profile, he's been able to um, basically spend time uh, filming all of the live protests. And he's been doing this for well over a year now. Um, someone that um, is a great voice for freedom someone that uh, has spent a lot of time, energy, uh, money into this. And, I mean, what, what can you say? I mean, this guy here has been outstanding. And it's been great that we've been able to uh, view all these protests because of him and because he's been there live on the scene. And with 65% of the vote, a whopping, whopping percentage, Rod Cullerton. And this is why you have to vote, folks. I never knew Rod would be able to get such a high vote, but when you get your people behind you, and they vote, this is what happens, mate. You know, like, Rod has been um, an outstanding candidate. He has, um, he's the leader of the GAP, the Great Australia Party, of course. He recently served Governor General Papers, basically saying that they're operating illegally, um, getting rid of um, constitutional um, references and so forth. Back, I mean, when you go back to 1973, there's a big story involved in that. 
but um, he's really behind um, this freedom movement. He's really um, against the mandates, lockdowns. He's been another true voice for freedom and someone that we will definitely see more of in the future. And we'll see how he goes with this um, latest um, event when, when it comes to the Governor General. Um, the last um, award that I've got here is the 2021 Australian Regressive of the Year Award. Now, past winners we've had in 2016, Waleed, Tom Tanuki in 2019, 2017, 18 and 20, Dan Andrews. I mean, he's won it in three consecutive different years. So let's see how they all end up going in this award. We've got Gladys Berejiklian, Stephen Marshall, Kerry Chant and Brad Hazard. Thought they would have gotten higher. They're absolutely tyrannical. Um, Jackie Lambie, another real turncoat. Uh, Mark McGowan, Anastasia Palaszczuk. I'm third with 11% of the vote, Michael Gunner. Michael Gunner, a real tyrant of Northern Territory. Many reports about him throwing people into camps. I mean, there's a few states now that have built these camps in the Northern Territory, Queensland and Victoria. And you just got to think to yourself, well, if we are really on our way down and the things are getting better, then why do they keep building these camps? I mean, what are they going to use them for? So that's quite a scary sort of thing to think and ponder. Um, on second place, Federal uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, 18% of the vote. And Scott Morrison, I mean, he seems to really be playing both sides of the field. At one stage he says, oh, well, you know, I'm not really involved, it's not my fault. And then the other times he says, well, you know, we have to put these mandates in place. Um, oh, but it's not my problem, it's the state. He always bucks, you know, always, always basically turns responsibility to everyone else but himself. Um, but nevertheless, he's full aware of the agenda with his handlers and all, and he's just going with it, and he's someone that needs to be thrown out. I mean, obviously, Anthony Albanese is not going to be a better choice, but we need to get rid of both of them and, and definitely cause um, a, a new system in place, uh, a new parties, new, new members, just wipe the slate clean. In first place, of course, 48% Daniel Andrews. I mean, this guy, tyrannical, he actually, Melbourne, was the most locked down city in the world. So this guy here, he definitely deserves to be the, the worst uh, regressive person of the year in Australia. Um, he also pushes left-wing agendas, of course, transgenderism, wokeism. Um, well, what can I say? I mean, always um, trying to clamp down on Christianity, um, push um, forward um, agendas, Invasion Day, of course. It keeps, keeps on going on and on. Why people voted for him, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It's madness that uh, people are still voting for these tyrants. And since we go through all these awards, there were all 10 awards that I've just explained to you here. Now, we've had a very terrible year with these mandates and lockdowns, vaccines, first, second, third dose now, unless you're not vaccinated if you haven't had your booster. So um, we, we really need to do something federal election coming up, because if we don't, this is never gonna end. Um, we need to stand up, we need to join minor parties, push forth, we have to campaign hard because this is do or die come election time coming up. I mean, this really is the decider. And the Liberals have been terrible, Labor's going to be worse, but that doesn't necessarily make the Liberals any better. We really need to wipe the slate clean. We need to show them that we've had enough of this nonsense. I mean, people have lost their jobs, they've lost their businesses. Um, their, their families, their livelihoods, people with mortgages now, they've been forced. I mean, many of the people that they've said have had the vaccine, it's only been because they were coerced, because they were forced to, not because they actually wanted to. And those people there are angry, and those people are going to vote against the, the current regime, as you can say. I mean, even though they've gotten the vaccine, even though apparently 95% have received the vaccine, it doesn't mean that they're supporting of the agenda. And a lot of people are starting to realise that this has greater, um, greater complications, greater plans involved. Depopulating, obviously, they've been really open about that. They've been open about um, people not wanting to have children. And there's been reports of infertility. There's been uh, miscarriages on the rise with uh, many children dying. I mean, 97.7% point, uh, of people survive this um, this virus, yet we're vaccinating 
everybody, healthy people, and they could have a, a, a healthy immune to tackle it naturally, but instead we're giving them this poison, which just destroys their immune. I mean, I know many people that are vaccinated that are getting hit hard worse when they get COVID than the ones that aren't, vac aren't vaccinated at all. So it really tells you a lot. And I mean, even now, five-year-olds that they're pushing it on, there's even places out there mandating it that the five-year-old can't attend a particular place if they haven't had the vaccine. And soon enough, it's going to go to, you can't get to school without the vaccine. And many parents are going to feel they have no choice. But this is why I say to you, homeschool your children, get them out of there, make sure you become self-sufficient, um, get out of the system, uh, connect with like-minded individuals, build communities, and just, that, that's all you need to do. Just, it's that simple. Just um, don't be lazy and just know that this is a fight that we need to have. We need to win this fight and we have to get off the system and start doing things for ourselves and start controlling our own lives and helping people out. So that's the, the awards and I'll definitely see you next year. It was Damien Ferry. Get onto our website, um, check everything out and just make sure that, uh, that you tune in to all of our articles, our videos, our content. And um, let's hope that this year people start to wake up and realise what's going on and that we do have a better year. And um, what can I say? They're going to run out of the Greek alphabet soon enough eventually. We've still got 20 more letters, so let's hope it doesn't go to that. So thank you very much for tuning in. And it was nice to be with you. And make sure you make a right choice this election coming up. It's Damien Ferry, Senior Editor of The Unshackled, and that was the 2021 Unshackler Awards, sixth time running, and I'll see you next year. Thank you.